Good morning, everyone. Greetings to all of you, wherever you might be watching from. This is Roberta here, coming to you from Robertaba Ministries. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are watching from. Um, let us know that um, you are there, you, you are joining us. Type something in the comment section so that we can uh, see you and acknowledge you all. Telling us where are you from, or well, where you were watching from, and uh, and your name, if you if it's okay with you, so that we can acknowledge you. Okay, uh, we we'll wait for a few minutes and then we can start here. We're gonna be continuing on the on the Holy Spirit where we left off. And then talk about his activities in um, in creation. All right, and then we share some insight, revelation about it, about you know some of the things that he has been showing me, and uh, why it's important that uh, we pay attention to, and then you know invite the Holy Spirit in our lives um, in terms of uh, salvation and. Um, some of his working, you know, working in the in the earth about his creation, and also um, some of um, the things that he does in terms of uh, uh, like wind, um, rivers, and uh, atmospheres, and uh, you know some of what he whether whether what whether he's in control or not that's what i'm trying to say because uh he is the creator creative power behind creation and so it's important that we know that and we acknowledge that we acknowledge it so that we are well informed in the activities of the holy spirit um, in the earth and then what how is connected to uh, us as human beings okay and so we're going to be looking into that and then this is leading to you know one from one step to the other what uh, the holy spirit is to us and to and to everybody every human being and into creation and why it's important that we know and we study what god's word is and where we have come from and where we are going by that through the hands of the holy spirit okay his workings and so uh and then we get to know him better because um some people uh i mean they hardly know anything about the holy spirit and so it's very important that we get to know the holy spirit okay because he's uh he's our life and he's everything that we need as christians at the moment because jesus said is when he was leaving he said to his disciples i'm leaving but i will ask the father to send you the comforter which is the holy spirit and he asked them to wait uh, in jerusalem until the holy spirit have come to them why was that because it was very very important that after where he left off talked and was an everyone about the holy spirit himself in his, his life and his ministry it was impart, important that he impart that in their lives and then uh, transfer that power that allowed him to do great and mighty things into the lives of his disciples so that they can carry on from there where he left off and then we have to do the same we have to follow the the, uh, the legacy and the mandate that we've been given to be able to um, follow the steps of the apostles and Christ himself because he's relying on us to carry on and take it up you know take it up from there and to um, impact others with his life what he believes what he taught us and who he is you know as a Lord so that we are not uh, overtaken we are informed okay so that is why it's very important that we know we get to know who the Holy Spirit is. All right, because he is uh, he's alive. All right, 
All right. It looks like um. Okay. I limit. What am I doing? <laughs> I shifted this um, so that we can carry on from here. Um, see where everybody. All right. I think we are ready to go now. So I'm gonna um, pray and ask the Holy St uh, Spirit to come and take control of what He wants to teach us and to open our heart to receive and to uh, to receive and to and to give us an understanding to grab the grab what He in depth what He's trying to uh, get to us. Okay. So that we, it will be useful for us uh, as we live and as we carry on the mandate of Christ to be able to do justice to what uh, the Great Commission is, okay? But without the Holy Spirit, we, can, we, we, we just can't do it because He's our helper and He's the one that instructs us and helps us and directs us and teaches us through all this. So we always need the Holy Spirit in whatever... Uh, that we do, especially also in ministry, okay, so we cannot function without the Holy Spirit And so if we don't have the Holy Spirit, then uh, there's a problem. It means we, ca we cannot make it Everything that we'll be doing will be in vain. And so that's where Why it's important that uh, wherever we do, wherever we go We rely on the Holy Spirit and we call him to come and minister through us we are not good enough in ourselves to do that without the Holy Spirit. Alright? And so if Christ needed the Holy Spirit and He's given us uh, His Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, who enabled Him, who was, who was, with, was with Him all the time, was able to help Him to accomplish all that He did, then we need Him. We need the Holy Spirit badly. And uh, there are people that vaguely know anything about the, know about the Holy Spirit, which is... Uh, it shouldn't be. So we're going to invite him to come and uh, help us to understand his word. Okay? So let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, I call upon you this morning. You are faithful and true to your word. I invite you this morning as I surrender my life into your hands. I yield myself into your hands and I humble myself before you. And I ask that you come and take absolute control for everything that will be done here, which you, Spirit of Truth, will do yourself through your word to us. Take absolute control of this vessel and work through me, Holy Spirit. Open the, the ears and the heart and the minds of your people to receive from your hand what you have to give us today. We thank you and we honor you. Help us to grab the deep understanding of who you really are. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way. Let your presence be felt and be known and touch your people in a mighty and a powerful way like never before. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' glorious holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. All right, guys. Everyone, uh, you are welcome. Again, if you just join us, you are welcome and we appreciate you so much. We thank you for joining us every time that uh, we come on, that you take time out and you come and listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. We are so grateful and we're thankful for the time that you take out, okay? And we don't take it for granted. We love you and we thank you. And so we're going to start here. and we're going to uh, uh, allow the Holy Spirit to speak and take hold of my tongue before I go. Uh, 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 uh. All right? That, that shows you I don't know what I'm doing. So we're going to depend on the Holy Spirit to uh, teach us today, okay? All right, we might we have some interesting insights as we teach on creation, um, as the Holy Spirit as the force and the agent of creation. Okay, so He's the power behind every action, and I, I'm going to share a revelation that uh, I asked 
I, I think it was two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, as I was lying down here, and I asked the Holy Spirit, is there something you want to say, that you want to give me to teach? But normally though, you just, you just they will tell me, just go ahead and do your videos and put it out there, okay? And so, um, then he gave me a wave, it was in waves. I saw it in waves of like a glory, waves of uh, cloud, but bright, not dark clouds. Very nice, dark, uh, what, bright uh, waves. And as the waves was going like this, he was telling me about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, how they work, and gave me the revelation. So I would like to uh, share that with you at some point whilst we are here, okay? I think I will do that first. As I, uh, I go along, I will see. Um, all right. And so I think I will start from uh, Genesis. Okay, so let's go to, because that's what, um, where everything started. That's the beginning of life and everything, okay? So let's see what uh, Genesis, uh, I'm going to start from one. Have to say about every, uh, creation, okay? All right. What is my glasses? I think I will bring it here. I mean, things around here. Alright. So, Genesis 1. And I'm reading from 1. And I might continue with uh, one, 1 to 2. Okay? So. Genesis 1, and I'm starting reading from 1 and 2, okay? It, say, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And I'm gonna, I think I'll go down a little bit. Let me see. Let me do. Pray. Um, I'll do. Um, I'm gonna start over again. I'm gonna do Genesis 1 1 to uh, 5. Okay, it gives us a little bit more. You know, being that we are talking about the creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. <laughs> Something just dropped in my spirit. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. All right. So now we see that in one, it says God created the heavens and the earth. And what does he say in two? He said, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters okay meaning the Holy Spirit was the one going of over the waters hovering from end to end every part of it not you know some part every because he has that ability going from one end to the other okay because what did he say he said it was what it was without form so nothing was on there and this is where people say so where does the angels come from that this is the second question the angels were already created so there was a i believe there was a belief something had happened for the earth to be um, void knowing that it's, there was nothing on there it was not formed 
that's why he said, number two said, uh, sorry, verse two said, the earth was without form and void. It means nothing was there. So this is a, a whole new creation that they were doing so from the beginning. But I believe that uh, uh, reading this, the angels were, had, had already been made. They were created, sorry. They were already created. And so that is why uh, you see here, because if they were not created, then why don't we find them here? So the angels were created before the earth was made. This earth, because they are different. Okay. I don't want to lose some of us. They are different earth. But this earth that we are, you know, from the beginning, where uh, Adam and Eve was, uh, came to be, is what we're talking about. Okay? The angels were not created on this, on this earth. They, they existed when this earth was being created, when it was, what, what? Without form and void, which meaning that there was nothing. Only darkness was cover, covering it. Okay? So there was nothing when uh, God said, let's create it. And when he, God is saying, let's, crea let's create, it means he's talking about uh, himself, the Holy Spirit, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's what the day means. Let us, let us, us means. Okay? That's what the, the word is saying. Okay? And he said what? Let there be light and so this is the i know it's very is uh very early but i have to fit this in before i move on one he said and god said let there be light and there was light and god said the light that it he said okay and god said let there be light that it was good and god divided the light from the darkness okay now look at look at two look at two it says what the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters and then one says what in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth okay so it means there was a spoken word the word spoke and then what happened action took place so when you speak you put what motion in place and then what the action is the result of what you have done which or what was spoken and so this is what is so early for me to be <laughs> doing this but that's how it looks like it's gonna be done here so let me show you so God speaks or oh God sorry God have a thought okay then he asks the word this is what I'm thinking. And what does, what what happened? And the word said, Okay, then let's do it. And so the word speaks and confirms and comes in agreement with the father, the thoughts that he had. And then what happens? Once the two of them comes in agreement, then what happened? Then the spirit comes in agreement and he says what? The spirit says, is the action. He said okay then let's do it and the action behind the thought is the holy spirit and then he brings the, uh, the uh, manifestation he demonstrates the uh, the power of the word in bringing life Unto what seems to be dead. Do you understand? 
And so this is what I, I have written down. I said the word the Holy Spirit is the one who accomplishes the work of God. Okay? Uh, why? And I said because he is the power. He is what well let me see. Because he is he is he is the power. And then I said one uh, God had an idea. Then he said to the Son, which is the lo- his love, and the and the Word, what do you think? Then the Son speaks out, but give his opinion. Then the Spirit go and do it because he is the power in action of all creation. And then he demonstrates. His, the, uh, uh, his power by by creative ways. So the spirit is the is very creative. He's the spirit of cre- uh, creativity, and so he demonstrates his power, putting action in place to what the word that has been spoken. Okay, and then the manifestation manifestation took place out of the action. Okay. So this is how the creation works. The th- uh, the, the 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 three uh, ag- comes to agreement. The father, you know, have a thought. He has an idea, and so he speaks out. So this is what we we should be doing. Now this is what we are, you know I'm thinking, and then the word comes in, and then he gives his concern, and the spirit agrees, and what happens? They bring the plans to pass, and that's how the the earth was created. Okay, and so the spirit brings life into the thought of of God, because anything that is without form, dead, and darkness is dead. And you see, he so said, "Then God said, let there be light, and there was light." So as soon as the thought comes, they agree with the word, the word comes out, and then power is seen by action. And so God speaks, when God speaks, he puts in motion what he wants to see. That's why the spoken word is so important. The spoken word is very important. If we watch it here, God has given us every blessings, but until we speak, we don't say it. Why? God could have done it without saying anything. But this is an example for us how things manifest, how things are created. All the blessings are there, but we unless we speak and put emotion. We can see the results, but as soon as we speak, power what goes behind the word. Power goes on what we are trying to get, and then we see the hand of God do what come to pass in the manifestation of His power, because His word is what is powerful, and the word has what life. The word is what spirit, and so it goes. No matter how you look at it, it goes back to the Holy Spirit. And so, so many things we don't see because we don't speak. We just expect that it should happen because God said. But even God said, He said, "Let what in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Then the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was what hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, "What? Let there be light. God wants light, and He speaks." Light comes because power is standing by, waiting to hear the word. The command is the word, and go into action. And that's exactly how you get results for your miracles. You can't just also just say it. You have to believe it, and you have to know that your words are powerful because God has given you what its word. And when you speak His word, power what goes behind it. And then bring the results. 
because the word is what powerful in its own right and so as soon as you speak the word which is the power of God then God takes it and God does not go back on his word and so he makes sure he makes sure that what his word is accomplished in your life okay and that's what uh, I'm trying to get to you here and then one more thing once we are talking about uh, creation um, I would like to at some point also um, give you uh, a sight a beautiful sight of what the Holy Spirit does uh, on the face of the earth okay and so we're gonna move on here let me see I think okay the will of the Holy Spirit I read that let me look at um, John 1 3 okay and let's see what John is saying to all of us John 1 3 all things were made through him and this is directing to the involvement of the Holy Spirit in creation okay why it's important that we know uh, because some of us uh, we are in churches that decide that they don't teach too much of that about the Holy Spirit they, they look at him as uh, uh, something that should not be there or something that is in the past and then sometimes they refer to him in a very um, disrespectful way and so they are not teaching it and they just put it aside and and so it's very important that we find out the truth and here is the spirit of truth and understanding and wisdom and so when we are lacking in so many areas because he's not there with us okay and so again this is John 1 and 3 and he reads in him was life and life was the light of men did you see that oh sorry did you hear that he said in him was life so if you are not in him you don't have life you are just walking around and that's why sometimes we have so many difficulties because it's not he's not in uh, you know with his life is not in us so again he said in him was life and the life was the light of men so when he is in you what, what, what does light do so when you have life in you as as you know children of God you shine <laughs> because you have the life of God in you you shine this goes on right for you because you have the God of goodness he's not God of evil he's God of goodness his life is in you and his light shines in you or light is in you you're gonna shine every time everything you do is gonna you're gonna be on top you're gonna shine before man and so that is uh, John 1 and 3 okay and then I'm gonna go to this other another scripture for his involvement let's look for Hebrews 9 um, let me see. Um, Hebrews 9 All right, I think I will read 14, um, and I read again, I read, it's uh, Hebrews 9, we are reading Hebrews 9, 14, okay, and it reads, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God, I read again, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? 
You see that? He said what? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, as the Holy Spirit, right here, offered himself for that spot to God. So, like I said earlier, his life and the life of his ministry, it was all done by the Holy Spirit. So sharing his blood, he said what? It was done through the Holy Spirit. Without him, he couldn't have done it. So what? We have to do what? Cleanse our conscience from dead works. He did good good works. So if there's you know, you having like difficulties like I said earlier. When the spirit is living in you, you have you shine every time. And then he has the ability to help us. He is all knowing. He has the ability to help us. So that we can do what? Cleanse our conscience, cleanse our minds, dead things that you know uh, stop us from reaching our God given uh, purpose in life, you know, to help us to uh, get rid of some of these things that uh, we go through. Okay, now let me go back here. I think I will go up here before I come back down. Let me do this right now. Let's look at. Uh, let me look at this. Okay. Let me go to Job. Okay, we're gonna go to Job twenty-six. Twenty-six. I'm gonna read a couple of them. Uh, Twenty-six, thirteen, fourteen, and I read. By the Spirit, sorry, by His Spirit, He adorned the heavens. His hand pierced the flame serpent. Indeed, these are the mere edges of His ways. And how small a whisper we hear of him. At the tender of his power, who can understand? <laughs> I read it again. It's so good. By his spirit, he adorned the heavens. Did you see that? The heavens was made by the power of the Holy Spirit. His hand pierced the fleeing serpent. He drove that serpent away. Hmm. Indeed, these are the mere edges of his ways. He said, these are nothing. Those things, this is nothing. It's just small, small things that he is able to do. These are just like children's game. Of the other things the Holy Spirit has the ability to do. And then he goes on to say, and how small is how small a, a whisper we hear of him? We hardly we hear hardly hear of the Holy Spirit, a mighty force. We hardly. But listen to this. He said. By the tender of his power, mm. I hear that before. The tender of his power, that's why I'm laughing, because it's like I'm reliving something. What I read. By the tender of his power, who can understand? Who can understand his 
his power. No one. You cannot comprehend it. All right. I think I will uh, share bits and pieces as I come to those uh, nuggets. Okay. And so, oh God. All right. Yeah, it was very windy. It was uh, it was in a dream, and it was so windy, and it was like tender. And the doors, I, I think I was uh, trying to close a door because the winds were so loud, and you can hear tender flashes, lightning everywhere. And I couldn't, I couldn't close the door. It was a big door. I couldn't close the door. And that is another way that sometimes he reveals himself to you that way. And then also he will show you what is coming. And so, um, all of a sudden, I could hear from behind. Oh, mommy, son aside, let me show you how to do it. And he, my, my daughter said, look, he said, look, mommy, easy does it, easy does it. And she closed the door. <laughs> so... This is the power of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't, I couldn't close the door. Sometimes I refer to windows and close the windows, and people think I'm talking about physical windows. No. And so he he does that with you. And uh, who was it? There's another, I mean, I mean, profound one. Also in the dream, I think I was going somewhere, and there was a hilly hilly area and I was climbing the hill going to look for somebody and this happened, the area happens to be in Ghana and uh, I'm climbing and climbing and climbing all of a sudden as I go up, the higher I go I saw a woman standing but the woman you know, I didn't look at her too much and I passed her but for some reason I couldn't find the person I was looking for and so I was coming back you know, down the hill, and the woman was still standing there. And from where I'm standing, she was on my left hand side. And then I turn and look at her, and then I see her crying. And I, that's when I speak, and I said, "What? Why are you crying? What happened?" And so she proceeded to tell me what was wrong with her. It was a healing that she needed. And so. I was moved by compassion. Like I tell you, everything that God gives me, he, has to, he allowed me to live it. And so I was moved by compassion. And then I spoke really in, within, within my spirit. You know, there are words that, because words have thought, life. And so sometimes you get to a point that you speak, you speak out of your spirit. And you see things happen. And so I said, Lord Jesus, Son of the Living God, and and I said, Lord Jesus Christ, I said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the Living God. When I said that, <laughs> lightning, tender, I mean, it's like, it's like it was speaking, and then I looked, and I'm like, because it was sudden, I'm like, what? is this and then when I look up what do I see the beautiful mighty Lord Jesus Christ covered his hair my Jesus big locks covered the whole sky looking at me this is my first profound encounter with him when he spoke audible voice when he spoke, I understood it. And then he caused me to stretch up my hand. And instantly, that woman was healed. But what happened? And this is, I'm saying all of this because of the heavens, the work the Holy Spirit can do. As soon as I said that name, the the t tender, the noise, the I mean, it has a voice. It was so loud 
the thunder and the lightning. Crack, crack, crack. Everywhere. It's like everything comes standstill. And I'm looking through his eyes and I'm like, oh my God. It's the Lord. <laughs> and that was my first audible encounter with him that he spoke in audible voice. And I understood it whilst I was in the spirit. But when I came out, I can't tell you what he meant. But I remember what I had to do for the woman and what has taken place. He gave me that gift. That was when, you know, I think it was, uh, everything was sealed. But there are things that, you know, other events before about healing ministry out of everything else. Before that uh, encounter, I could not believe it. I can't take it out of my eyes. It's like every time I got it, like fresh. I uh, see these things are fresh to me because I I keep living it. It's like it happened today, and this is what who the Holy Spirit is. He's that powerful. He's that powerful. His power is beyond. You can hear the voice and the, the power behind the, the, uh, the lightning and the tender and the light. You know, it's like come one after the other. And all of a sudden I look up and I'm like, what is that? And then all of a sudden, who do I see? That's the Lord. The Lord was there. So he causes us to triumph. I'm telling you. The Lord causes us to triumph and it's all done by the Spirit of the Living God, okay? And so we're going to go, I'm going to go to um, 33, I look at 33, 4, and I'm still in Job. Let's go to 33, 4. I hope uh, you're getting something out of this, um, all this revelation that God is sharing. With us. So 33 in verse 4 He said the spirit of God has made me <laughs> And the breath of the almighty gives me life Did you hear that? When I'm reading this I, my, my spirit man took me straight to Genesis It's like I'm watching God create Adam He said the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. And so, the Holy Spirit is so important to us. We have got to know Him. He's the best thing that will happen to you. He's there. He's already there. But He's so gentle that He will not do anything unless you invite Him. Take it for me. I'm not telling you lies. Feel about it. Because I live it. It's the best thing. That the best gift God has given us. After his, he gave us his love, his son. He said, now, I will do what? I'm coming down myself. But this time, it's going to be my power. To move you. And to cause you to triumph. Because I love you. And God, come, God comes and lives within us. Are you getting the picture that I'm trying to paint here? God himself lives inside of us. Almighty God. The creator of heaven and earth. And of the universe. The one and only true God. Lives inside of you. You know how precious you are? And God lives inside of us and we walk around like orphans. We don't know who we are. When you get the idea and the concept of what I'm teaching here, your life will turn around. Nothing will matter. Things that you know really disturb us. You see the change. You see the hand of God like never before. 
can you imagine God speaking with you and having a conversation with you? Sometimes I will hear him at one time. You know, all this title business. You know, you are this, you are that. And then I wrote something and uh, somebody was trying to, was seriously trying to correct me. But if we look at Genesis, <laughs> I have to be patient with the person. Because I know what God calls me. <laughs> God has a preferred name for me. And so, if you look at Genesis, or to the eyes of God, that, you know, he doesn't say oh, male or female. He said man. Man was created from the beginning. That's what he says. Before he came, he said man was created. And so I tend to live by the word and act like, you know, as much as I can as a human being. And so if I call myself a prophet, the, the gender doesn't matter to me. Because I know what God calls me. <laughs> I'm going according to the word. It doesn't matter. But somebody was very seriously trying to correct me to change it. it was, I, I think it was two, there are two, two people here yeah, so far. And so I just didn't want to, um, I think that was the first one. I didn't want to say anything. I just, uh, I thought about it and I'm like, oh God, I don't really want to change this. It doesn't make any difference to me. It's just one of those things. And so I changed it eventually. And so I'm lying down one day and I'm hearing God <laughs> tell him about this situation. He said, we don't really mind. No, we don't really uh, mind what she calls herself. We prefer this name, that name, that name. And uh, he calls me to hear him because he knows that it was on my heart. And it was bothering me what God would think about it. And so without saying anything to him, he knows what is on her heart or what her thoughts are. And so he had a conversation in heaven about me, about the names that he prepared for me. Well, what was I doing also? Yes, I was... Ooh. <laughs> okay. Because I'm... Because I'm in a process of uh, trying to... I was in the process of doing my doctorate. And so, he didn't even mention that. That was the plus that he wanted, you know, I wanted. He gave he, he give me the abil you know, ability to do it if I want to. But you tell me, oh, better this one? <laughs> I think it was my master's. And he goes, oh, better this one you have to fight. You have to fight to get it. I'm like, God, you think that God will help me, right, to get it easy? Mm -mm. That's when you tell you what is going on. He said, fight. I want you to have it, but you have to fight because there was something going on. It's a fight. You have to fight this out. But don't keep your eyes. So he said, that, but keep your eyes on me. Don't keep your eyes on the problems. He said, you keep your eyes on me. And I have to fight. And I did. It wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't easy. I wanted to give up. I'm like, oh boy, do I really have to struggle with this? But uh, I don't like to fail in, in something that also God has given, you know. God. Some, so many people don't get, get a chance. And so I want to at least make sure that, you know, I do all that I can. And then God will do the rest. And so... Uh, Creation is beautiful to watch. There's something else I will say about it. I'll do I'll do that at the end. But uh, let's see where we are. And I'm gonna go to Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Psalm 104, and I'm doing parody. So you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you, and you renew the face of the earth. 
we do hear that. It takes you back to what Genesis said. You sent forth what? Like I just explained to you what the revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me. He said you sent forth your spirit. They are created. And you renew the face of the earth. This is Genesis. I'm looking at Genesis. The hand of the Holy Spirit. His involvement, he has always been there from day one. We cannot do anything without the Spirit. Because the Spirit proceeds, it comes from the side of God. It's God Himself, He's taking His rip out, giving us our very, His very best for life. This is God's gift. God Himself gave Himself as a gift to us. Because if his love is too big for us to comprehend. Listen, God wanted a family and he created one. He yearns for a family and created one. And he wants to fellowship with us. Have that special relationship. And this is what is going on here. How much you look, just look at it. Your own father, how much your father loves you. Those of, you know, uh, I saw you who had a good one. How your father, or you relate to your father, or your father relate to you? How much more God? God loves his children. And this is what we are seeing here. Okay. And so, um, I will come down here and then talk about let me see if I can. Okay, let me finish down here. Uh, all right. We are talking about uh, creation. So creation was new life, okay? So I'm looking at the baptism, for instance, of the of our Lord Jesus Christ by John the Baptist. Uh, indicate it's an indication of new life. Of new life because water gives life and uh, the whole thing took place in water as well and so um, new life yeah, let me see what I said I said the baptism of our Lord indicates new creation okay and it took place in water as God moved on the face of the waters isn't that beautiful huh it is it is creation of new new life who took place on the face of the water and who is you know the presentation of the symbolism of the Holy Spirit is one of them is uh, water okay oh how many times I've seen uh, different dreams and visions it's a little bit cold in here and if I turn it to it gets so cold hot sorry <laughs> let me see if I can yeah, shift it a little bit, and uh, yeah, it's getting very hot here, and so I have like four fans around me. <laughs> I'm sorry, and then so, um, what was I saying? How many times I've received visions and dreams in water? It's just amazing, it's just amazing. Um, the creation is something that we should all be very interested there's so much in the creation that from there because that's what is from the beginning from there everything started so for instance even in your own life if something in the bible you don't understand go back to genesis for the beginning you will find it you'll find the answers you'll be amazed when i was doing my masters i had wanted to do theology and uh, what happened? Something did happen. And uh, you know, I had to wait for, after I graduated, I had to wait for four years before I do the next, uh, the next uh, program I want to do. And I was, I said, no, 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 I don't have time for it. And you see, sometimes I will make decisions and then, or God will allow me to make decisions and then, 
to make me think that I am the one deciding it. And even if he doesn't like it, he'll wait until last minute and then jump in. <laughs> and so um, I said, I no, 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 I don't have time for it. And also, I think there was a, a, there was a, a course within the program that I didn't like. I'm like, no, 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 no. And so anyway, I decided to change it. That was God's doing. And then I changed it. And when I changed it, it was amazing. Every class, you find God in it. And the program was Global Studies. Not global studies like the world taking it and calling it something that is not. They use that global uh, to find the agenda, but this is biblically, solely biblical uh, background for the, this program. And the more I get into it, I think that was, apart from uh, biblical studies that I did from, from my bachelor's, Order. I did a whole lot of Bible, you know, uh, programs, and so it was the second best. Everywhere I look, you find God in the in the in the course that I was doing. Everywhere I look, I'm reading, and I was enjoying because you can see the hand of God. And so when I see all this, you know. Self, uh, pleasing people talking about global and all the, the things that comes with it just to find the agenda I, they just make me laugh it's just all about making money but if you go on the biblical way of global studies it's solely bible and God you find every page you find God every page you find God and that was uh uh, also, some of I met some of the uh, some nicest people, <laughs> but uh, from bachelors, bachelors was the best in the sense that you find you find people who know they know their 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 stuff, as you say, they know what they are doing, and uh, even if they they don't agree with you, most of them. So far as you have scriptures to back it up, they will tell you they don't agree with you, but they give you a point, and some of them to uh, want to change to what they are thinking. If you don't, they take a uh, point from you. So that's different. But I'm telling you, a uh, global studies on the basically um, the biblical way. My goodness, it was beautiful to have joined those. Uh, that program because I find God on every page and the more I read the more the Holy Spirit will give me because you see my mind works differently <laughs> when I read something you see what I was doing now and I read something I'm like hmm Holy Spirit what do you think what's going on here and then it started flowing and just like I said to him what if he has something for me to write and all of a sudden, it was like it came in waves. I was just lying down. It's like he were, the word he was speaking, but it was in the form of wave. A wave like a glory one, the word glory, yeah. It was wavy like that. I was watching it. I closed my eyes, but I can see and hear him. And I was watching how it was coming in waves. His word, his word coming in. That's why he gave me the revelation about the... Father, Son, and the, and the Spirit about how things work, okay? And so, um, what was I? I was saying, 104.30. Oh, did I miss the thing is here? Okay. So, 104.30, it says, you, I read it again. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. And that's what the Holy Spirit did. If you look at Genesis 1, okay, and so that is done, and then 
I come down here let's look at uh, the first Corinthians six and see what is saying to us six what am I looking for nineteen And he reads, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Thank you, Lord. Did you hear that? Our bodies are the temple of the living God. And so the indwelling spirit lives within us. He lives. The Holy Spirit is the indwelling. And uh, I'm repeating this before we get to the next thing because I want to make sure we have on uh, we have enough understanding of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, this is so. Like I said before when we come up here and uh, we come to teach we are we are given enough uh, so that we can understand and so there's more that you know about the holy spirit and different areas that we can talk about but we want to give you um, enough to for you to apply to your life and so uh, until christ comes we still have to live here and so Everything that we're trying to do is to give you enough to live your life to the fullness, okay? Of what God has planned for you. And so, um, let's look at um, John, John, Quay, and, uh, and see what John Quay is saying. Don't pray for it. Um, okay. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I'm going to go to and read two down to eight. So I'll read it again. John 3, reading from 3 to 8. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I said to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I said to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows, <laughs> the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it, it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. This scripture here, um, 8, is talking about the Holy Spirit, okay? So the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from. He's eternal God. He's eternal God. And where it comes from and where it goes. He's eternal God. And this very 
um, where we are, it's talking about the regeneration. Okay, it's talking about regeneration. What is regeneration? I wrote something down a little bit uh, definition. Generation is God's is God bringing man to new life from the start of previous of separation from God because of sin and death. Being born again, and that's what uh, the scripture is just saying. Uh, John 3 okay and so I'm gonna read uh, Ephesians 2 so we can see it okay Five. And it reads Ephesians two five. Even when we were dead in trans in trespasses, let me put that down. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. To Christ, together with Christ, by grace. You have been saved. Okay, so I read again Ephesians two five. Even when we were dead in trespasses, that's talking about sin. Okay, anything that is dead is you know is sin is dead. Made us alive means he gave us new life even though we are dead he caused us to become alive together with Christ and so it's only by the grace of God or by, by the work that Christ did on the cross by his grace that we have life again okay and so that's what regeneration is and uh, it says what I say to you unless a man be born again you cannot enter the kingdom of God and we're going to go to first Peter and see what first Peter says about it all right first Peter 1 3 as you say, it says what? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's what I said over there. And so, without the resurrection, would be nowhere so dying alone was not good enough he had to be able to he had to come out of death and he took the, the keys in the hands of the evil one okay and so the resurrection power is an awesome experience okay so, oh, I'm good. Now, the new saint experience on the most powerful, one of the powerful uh, work of the Holy Spirit. It's just amazing. And so, all that Christ did, the Holy Spirit was the, the power force, the action behind behind everything that the Christ had to uh, have to do about his life, his ministry, it's all about the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the action behind everything, every powerful, every miracle that 
took place in his, in his life and the lives of the apostles themselves. They, could, they, they did not do anything powerful or heal anybody. It was after they had received the Holy Spirit. And so, if you want more, this channel is for us to learn and those of us who want more. And so, if you come in here, please um, don't take it for granted. There's so much going on on this channel. And uh, if you apply it, I say don't take it for granted, meaning apply it and see what God will do. You'll be amazed how your life will change. Apply it, okay? And so, um, all right, let me see. Let me see. One and two, I already read that. Uh, let me see. We are still in uh, First Peter. I'm going to read the two from one and two, okay? Elect according to the for knowing, no, elect according to the for knowledge of God the Father, a sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Did you see that? We see the Spirit here again. Hmm? So the Spirit sanctifies us. It does. And all of that trying to show you the hand of the Holy Spirit. Why it's important that we have it as well. Okay? And so, let me see what my... Okay, before I go that, let me see Thessalonians, what it says. Thessalonians 2. I'm looking for 13. Alright. It says, But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord. Because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit. And believe in the truth. Did you see that? So then we go again. Salvation, sanctification, all done by the Spirit in truth. Believing in the truth. The Word of God is the truth. All right, okay, so I'm gonna go to uh, I think I'll go back to I've done this already, so I will do that again. And I said the Holy Spirit Spirit illuminate our, our lives, okay, so let's go to let me look to. I think I'll go to First Corinthians and see. And now what a number what uh, I'm looking for two and twelve. Two and twelve. All right. Well, I've gone too far. Let's move the previous sticking together. All right, there we go. Two and twelve. It reads, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. All right, so what have been given freely? Salvation. Salvation. Spiritual things. If I read down, let me see. Yeah, let me see. Oh no, 12, 12, 13, not 12, 12, sorry. 12, 
13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You see that? I read again. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches. So there are things that is of the world, not of God, that the man teaches. But we should pay attention to the ones that the Holy Spirit is teaching us and compare spiritual compare spiritual things with spirit, spiritual <laughs> so if we don't do that like i said when things don't go well because we don't have or we are not allowing the spirit to um, have its way in our, in, in our lives. Because when the spirit comes and he teaches you, things get easy. And then you can compare that with what, what the spirit of God is saying. When things change, the changes start coming. Compare it, what God to uh, compare it against what God's word is, you will see the change. You see the change. All right. I've already done Job up here. And so, uh, I think I'll move on here to go to the next thing. All right, you see, all right, how is the Holy Spirit able to do all of this? Because, like I said, it's all-knowing. We have a uh, prophet testify about him, we have Jesus himself testi testifies about him. And if I look at... Uh, very Babel did testify about him. If you look at uh, the career for you can see his account. Um, but before I do that, the Holy Spirit is I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me turn this a little bit excuse me. Bit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent and omniscient. Omniscient. Okay, omniscient. And so, if He's omnipresent, then He's, he's all knowing, He's all, he can, He's everywhere, not partly, but wholly. So I wrote something here. Without the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit being, Holy Spirit being omnipresent, meaning He's not, He's not just part, but all of God. And wherever, or, what did I say? And He's ever present in every place. He, he, what? he fills the whole universe in all its parts and present at once okay that is the uh, omnipresence and then the omniscient i said he is omniscient because everything and all things that can be known and he tends to his desire to the end he is perfect and eternally knows all things and so he is not have God or his, he lacks anything. He's God. I've watched him 
and he will, he will call me before I wake up. He will call me and uh, he said, Roberta, Roberta, and I will wake up. And uh, I will not open my eyes because what is happening at that point, oh gee. <laughs> okay, there are particular angels that will show their faces to me before I wake up. These are not just ordinary angels. And I say that again because it depends on your assignment. And they are not the only angels around me. These particular angels, you know, you can't mess with. But I strongly believe and I know that it's because of my assignment. So these, there are particular and mighty angels that are around me, and there are more. And so, uh, they will show me their faces. And so, but the first time I saw it, I, oh my goodness, I had never saw, seen anything like that. I jumped and I was scared to close my eyes or sleep, go back to, go back to bed. <laughs> and I said to myself, because at that time there was so much going on, I said, Holy Spirit, do not let the devil take over me. I was so scared. I told somebody, you know, really serious what's happening. And then I will lie down again, close my eyes, and then it show up again. I'm like, and I get up now, got up. I'm like, this is not happening. And I'm praying this is not happening. Father, help me. <laughs> I didn't know it was the Father himself doing it. Help me. Do not let the devil take over me. <laughs> and I'm praying. And then I close my eyes and I will, they show up again. I'm like, okay. Then it, it dawned on me. I'm like, okay. Father, if this is you, have your way. It was not easy. It was not easy. I had to close my eyes. So, because I, I was tired, I went to sleep. And then I closed my eyes. Not only they were trying to wake me up, that's what they started. <laughs> me up to pray. So, there are certain times they come when the Holy Spirit, because I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. And it was trying to, so I, they will go, okay, I think. Uh, those are the angels. And because I want have, I have to talk about them later, I don't want to. You know, I don't really want to. But the Holy Spirit is doing it. There are certain angels that they have four faces. The four faces? Is the fourth? Uh, eagle. Yeah. And they show me their faces, and I will look at them. You know, and they hover around me. I don't know what they would, I don't know what they do with me, <laughs> but they show up very early, and uh, and then I, I was watching the Holy Spirit, and he he will allow me as he is moving the whole universe. He will move it, it's like a, a what is like a globe. And he will move it, spin it with speed. He will spin it, spin it, and I'm watching what he's doing. And then, before he allowed me to wake up. And meaning, if he allowed me to wake up, meaning the, the vision was stopped. And then there are ordinary other angels will come, and those ones you I will see their wings, and you see the whole form, but you don't see their face. Even though there are certain times they will show you their face, you know, not too close. They don't want to scare you, and so um, they will hover around me, and then that will. Says when I get up, 
<laughs> with other angels unless I get up it doesn't stop and they go on and on and uh, sometimes I'm walking in, it feels like I'm walking into them uh, one day one of them really I mean I really jump I'm like really <laughs> and uh, and so the the Holy Spirit is in charge of the whole world and he is uh, the one who is the restrainer is a restrainer he created the world and so he's interested in the world especially where when God's children are in the world he's not taking it for granted he is very very interested and uh, he will do as he please and I'm telling you he spins the evil spin the whole world and I'm watching that is how and then he will show me things that uh, are happening so for instance, when there's a bad weather coming, I will know that it's coming. I will know whether it's from him. No, the bad weather is it's not that it's from him. There are things that you allow to happen. And so I will know that it's coming. There's a bad weather coming. And so that's how I know some of these things because I, I see it. I see that it's coming. And so uh, the Holy Spirit spins, spins the whole world. It spins, it spins the universe. And uh, I'm going to give you the juicy bit later when we get to the end. And so he's eternal. He knows everything. He's not lacking anything. In fact, he's so, there's so much in him. You don't have to get to know the Spirit of God. Okay? And so um, I read a couple of uh, scriptures. I will not go through all of it because time is gone. So that um, you guys can do what you want to do if you are watching us. I'm going to go to Psalm 139. 139. And I'm looking for 7. I'm going to read it maybe to 12. Yes, yeah. Where can I go from your... Where can I go from your spirit? No way. I'm not letting go, Holy Spirit. Or where can I flee from your presence? You are everywhere. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say surely, the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. That's a beautiful scripture. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. You see that? The darkness shall not hide from you. The darkness cannot hide from the Spirit of God because all things were what? were made by Him all things were made by Him so He's omnipresent and then maybe I will read at 17 I'm 17, I'm doing 27 and 28. And he reads, So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might look for him and find him though he is not far from each 
one of us see that God is very near because he lives on, in us it's not far from us it's not far from us and then I will go to Isaiah 46 46 and I read from 10 declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall not stand shall st- my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure I read again declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure that's the word of God and of the Lord he will do as he please and his counsel shall stand as he had declared from the beginning is God all by himself he does not rely on anybody his counsel is done all right let's see, see what um, I was gonna do Jeremiah but I will leave it alone let me do some 147 right there one four seven. One four seven. One four seven. And I will do five. Great is the Lord, and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite, or infinite. His understanding is endless. It doesn't end. It's eternal. This understanding is eternal. It does not end. Great is our Lord, and that is Psalm 1475. Great is our Lord, and mighty in power. That's the Holy Spirit. His understanding is it infinite okay and so when we say that we are wise out of God it's foolishness we are not wise in our own selves wisdom comes from above it's from God not from man man is worthless let's go to first Corinthians 1 and see what he reads over there. Come on. Stop it, stop it, stop it. First Corinthians one twenty five. Alright, there you go. Is it only twenty five? Okay. Why do I have it twice? Okay. So First Corinthians 20, uh, 1 25 because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men than, ma- than men I read it again because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men and like I said we are not strong in ourselves or good in ourselves okay unless God's wisdom is in your life. You are not, you are not making any progress. All right. I think. I guess this. I will leave this alone. I'll come back here. All right. 
tonight, I want to tell you about the beauty, the beauty of the universe. God is beautiful. <laughs> God is beautiful. The Holy Spirit is the agent, agent of the uh, universe. Um, agent in the providential work of God in the moral sphere, the areas of history and ethical relationship. Um, let me read uh, before I say anything else. Let me read uh, John 16, 8 and 11. Eight and eleven, or eight to eleven, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Now we are talking about the world and the Holy Spirit, because he's the one that judges the world. Okay, he convicts them, convict them, and then he pronounces judgment on them for their immorality and sinful ways. Okay, uh, abomination against God. So we read uh, John 16 from, 13, from 8 to 13. And mark this. I like to do that so that I don't have very good. And when he has come, he will convict the world the world of sin and of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged I still have my, I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of himself he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you of things to come. Now, we just write, write, write that Jesus, he said what? Then I'm talking about 13 now. He said, however, he the spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Okay? That he will take what he sees and give it to us. He will not talk about his own own authority. But whatever he sees the son is doing or saying, he will take it and he will give it to us. But if you look at eight, it says what? He said, and when he has come, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. And that's Jesus talking. He said, and when he has come, he will convict the world the world of the sin of sin and the and of righteousness and of judgment because they did not believe in Christ. And transgress the a lot of transgressions uh, trans, uh, abomination against God and uh, immorality. Okay, and the ruler that the Bible is talking about is Satan himself. Let me look for uh, John 14. Oh, didn't I read this? 14:30. I thought I read it. Let me see. I think I don't see this. 14:30 must be another scripture. 
says, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has come, he has nothing in me. Let's read it again. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. The ruler that we're talking about is the devil. And then let's look at uh, 1231. Let me look at 1231. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. There we go. That's the perfect one. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And then I'm going to do first. Let me look for it. This thing is blowing, 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 blowing. Very easy, does it? With paper. They use stick together. Come on. Where is it? Oh, stop it. This is second. It's taking it back to second. I want first. Alright. So I'm looking for first John five nineteen. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Okay? So, at the moment, uh, the earth here is under control of uh, the wicked one, which is Satan. But he, has, he doesn't have the final say because he'll be cast, uh, you know, cast out. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under this way of the wicked one. And so we always have to be aware we, are, we have nothing in this world. We are not part of the world. We live here, we live in here, but we are not part of it. We are God, not of the wicked, okay? All right. Okay. And so, the judgment of the world will be on the sin that has been, or the sin that is in the world. And so, the Holy Spirit would judge and declare a judge them and declare them the world guilty and then he pronounce judgment on the world and the ruler of the world and so morality is going to be part of it you know knowing from right right between differentiating from right and wrong and then the sin will be the transgressions of the divine law the offense to God Okay, and so uh, this is what we have for tonight. But let me see what I was gonna. Yes, the universe. I'm gonna tell you something about God. The Holy Spirit is just amazing, and He never ceases to uh, amaze me. I saw God. I know, I know, nobody has seen God. But I'm going to explain something to you. Because we are talking about the universe. And that's what the Holy Spirit uh, gave me. I was in, what was I? I think it was 2008. I just moved to that, uh, yeah. And, uh, was it 2008? 
No, it wasn't. It was 2007. 2007. 2007. No. Why did I move into that place? Okay, we moved in 2007. Alright. Yes. And then 2008 it happened. I was broken. Because a whole lot was happening. I was broken and God, like always, have been my everything. And so, all I could do was pray, and the days that I cannot pray, I will just worship God and just rest, rest and rest in His arms. But I always have to say the Holy Spirit is always there. He was always there, but it took Him. It, I mean, whatever was, was going on was heavy, and uh, we didn't know anybody here, and so. Uh, and also I keep, I keep things <laughs> and so um, it was hard I had to, you know, the Holy Spirit has uh, trained me that way even though the, you know, things that I say to other people but not just only people I don't know and it was people I didn't even know in the country was outside most of them and so I'm lying down one day. What was I doing? Yeah, I was I was sleeping. I was lying down one day and all of a sudden I could see the angels and then all of a sudden I was taken out again and I'm sleeping and then all of a sudden it's the universe. And what do I see? I tell you, God is the best, He is the best designer you can find. He's the best designer in town. <laughs> I see the only way I can describe it, but what I'm going to say is more than that. I see the biggest eye, yes, an eye, this eye. The biggest eye I have ever seen. God Himself came to see me. This is no joke. I said I was broken and I was lying down. Mm. God knew He has to come. He has to come. He has to come. I rented my, my, my I bought, had bought, uh, my apartment. I had moved, sold my house, and then went to Ghana and come back. And I bought an apartment. Uh, and so I had to rent it and come. I mean, a whole lot. I had to do things fast, fast in London and come. And was one thing after the other. I mean, it's a father. Why? <laughs> he allowed certain people to get on my back. What he was doing was stripping me of everything. He allows me to have things. But it looks like I wasn't getting them his message. He means business with me. It's like my time was up. <laughs> he has covered me. And I believe, you know, he moved me here to pull everything down and then build everything up again. And uh, during the process, some people, he allowed certain people to do a whole lot, and I don't think I was ready for pure evil. I've never, I've seen things, I've, I mean, the fact that I was on a, a land that I didn't know, and the way everything happened, hey. so God himself came down. This is no joke. The most beautiful eyes or oh, I, I should say, I, I have ever seen. And I'm lying down, all of a sudden before me, the biggest eye, and in this eye, the only way I can describe the beauty of God is the patterns was like, 
an Indian very rich goddess embroidered and I'm lying and I'm like <gasps> and I could not take my eye of it because you see um, like I, I tried to explain the last time God has pinned you down so you can't move and he was just watching over me just staring the eye was gazing it's like I when I'm looking at the eye it's like I'm the only thing that matters to him his attention and focus was on me this went on for more than hours because I wasn't going anywhere I wasn't ready to get out of bed I just wanted to sleep because I was tired emotionally tired but God was not going to um, cause me or leave me to be broken that it, it will not be repaired because since he has allowed things to go on for a long time and he has to come and touch me himself and he took that fall but what was around the eye was beautiful to watch the, the galaxy the, I mean the, 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 the colors you will see things that I still see certain things I have no words to explain it's just beautiful you know the glory of God that God himself is that this is God that is visiting you if that's all you know there are so many things up to now the Holy Spirit told me from day one there are so many things I will not understand but with time he will explain it to me I see angels that I don't have words to describe the way they look but they are angels I know they are angels they don't look like Michael they don't look like the the fiery ones that I ooh. <laughs> that I see and the other ones with their faces the fire ones ooh, also have faces and so um, not the ones that look like you and I this they look like how do I say this I will say animals because it's something that you are looking at it's an unusual that's the word the unusual features or face things that I see but these what I see they are angels and every time I see I jump and then he the father was there and watching me watching me was so long hours I didn't want to get up in the first place and he shows up I was tired I'm like how can you allow me to go through this and that was my cry so father what did I do to deserve this but you see that's why you keep telling me that <laughs> I got your place or better you are not a victim <laughs> because he has allowed you know what he tried to do he has allowed it to happen he said, I pull you out so that I'll put you in a place that it's only you and I. You will listen to my voice. You see, he created me to do this. That's what, that's what I'm born for. I'm like that one, you know, uh, the story that I got to know later. When I was dealing with somebody and somebody that knows me from, you know, the, uh, and it's something about me, he said, uh, this is what you used to do when you open your mouth you say things like a child it comes to pass and so I should be careful when I'm dealing with certain people not to be quick to speak but God has allowed me to go to certain things he, he lets me know he, had, he, had, he allowed it and so there were people that were so evil to me that God wanted it he, will hear. he allowed it and so he pulled everything that I know took everything and stretched me 
so far that I was broken, I had no choice but to call on him. I was making every vow, I was doing everything, saying all the things that, you know, anything to get him moved. I've always, no matter what had happened to me, God is always with me, number one. People didn't know because I don't talk too much about what I see and what I don't see already, you know, uh, people talk about things they don't know. And so I kept, there was a lot that I kept to myself. And sometimes it felt like uh, it's blocked. And then every now and then the, the Holy Spirit will give me uh, remove uh, the, how do I say it? He will let me remember certain things and then he covers it. But it was my mouth. When I say something, woo, that I know it, it's going to come. I remember there was a, a lady that we were in church with and, you know, in order not to go to too much, she had, she lived somewhere and then uh, I had to move from where I was. This is in London. And then we were living in a, a place that I think I was sharing or something. Yeah, we were sharing certain things. It's a very nice place. The Sadler's World Theatre. Next to Sadler's World Theatre. And she wanted to go back where she came from. I said, don't go. If you go, isn't that the place that blah, 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 blah. And I didn't know, apparently later get to know that. It was because of me she was going. I didn't even know what I had done. And the Holy Spirit was speaking to her. I didn't know myself at the time. I said, don't go. Isn't the way this happened, this happened, if you go, they'll find you. And I think she was upset with me so badly that I didn't know that. It was later another person told me. She went. And she, the very thing that came out of my mouth happened to her. Oh, boy. Now I was in double, double trouble. God was trying to help her. I spoke and was, you know, but because she was upset with me, I didn't know that she was even upset with me. She was upset with me. And so, um, this is, it was just so beautiful. If you see the universe and the designs, it's amazing. So by this time, God is, is like an eye, the biggest and the most beautiful eye I've ever seen. It was like Indian embroidered lace, you know, but it, this is very rich. There are no words apart from using that, you know, to explain. Because when I was a child, God would give me dreams about designs because I've done... Hmm. <laughs> Holy Spirit, what are you doing to me today? Today's more revelation. Um, I've done, I've done designing. I did designing, dressmaking designing. And so that's what actually took me to London. I was in designing school. And so um, that was the only way I can explain it because God will give me designs. I will dream about them. And so I'll get up and I'll design those clothes, clothing and I'll wear them. And so I, when I was growing up, I designed my own clothes. I knew how to make you know uh, clothes before i went to i went to fashion school at Devon road there's a fashion school at Devon Road, and so i i knew how to you know do all of that before i went there and so uh, nobody taught me it's just god giving me and so that's why i said god is the best designer and so god is just beautiful he's just beautiful he's just beautiful if you see the universe, the galaxies, I mean, when you see the, the beauty of it, when I, every time I see it, it's different. And when you, when you see it, you know, this is God. When, so God will visit me like that, he himself. He has, he has not stopped either. When was this? Three days, no, it was the last time I was on. It three days ago, yeah, after I finished. Uh, because I, I have been naughty, so I was in, <laughs> I was in trouble with God. You know, I, I let a little bit things got busy, and I have that with God. 
so he will let you know say hey 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 why are you not you know doing this and that and so i was after i finished um i had the most awesome experience the last time i was on whew, after i finished the holy spirit god almighty god took me to the holy of holies yes he took me to the holy of holies the curtains were there and i was standing watching the glory of god in there it was just amazing to watch i'm like wow just beautiful and so god comes and reveals himself and it's the same holy spirit who gives us all this ability and so when i'm talking about the holy spirit i know what i'm talking about i leave it it's not that i have lived it i leave it it's progression is continuous it does not stop with me and so like i said i was in trouble with god because uh, three days he said to me after he showed me all of it, he said all i want is worship <laughs> i'm like okay father So, and that's what I got, and I gave him my best, one of the best, because he and I, you know, I, like I said, for one year, that's all I did, worship, praise, and then he would tell me, dance for me, and then, anyway, my daughter said, I don't, I don't know how to dance, I just moved one step from here to there, but uh, God likes it, okay, and so, um, when I had to eventually have to work, it felt I felt naked, and I'll go to work driving and crying, and apologizing to God that uh, I'm sorry uh, that I don't have time to fellowship with Him the way. And I remember very well one day. I think I was doing that, complaining and apologizing to God, and. I was taking and I slept and I was doing that I think in my, even in my dream and before I could say another word an angel of the Lord came and whisked me <laughs> I don't like heights but what I was looking it was like a, a mat in a four square mat and the angel of the Lord was holding the end like this I'm like hey like this as if his dad didn't want to touch it and he I was sitting on it and it was like wherever they took me i don't know and that's one thing with me they always take me away i don't know where i go <laughs> okay and then god will bring me back he didn't want me to blame myself he didn't want to come you know uh, cry about it and i heard him saying i am very pleased with you i'm very pleased with you and so that's why sometimes i'll tell you don't don't beat yourself down because what God is looking is your effort. The, at least you are making the effort. God knows your heart. But for me, because I've gotten that uh, solid and close that close relationship, I felt like my I'm, I'm, I was falling apart. Honestly, I, I I felt like I was dying. This is how much God is to us when we don't have Him. Well, when you get to that place. You have God that way, that close, and you don't see Him one day. When I say don't see Him one day, with me, things are happening, but still yet, it's different. When He shows up different way, you can see the angels and all that. That's not good enough for me. I had to have encounter with those, you know, the the, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit in a special way. And so this is what the Holy Spirit can do. He's the one that gives us all this, the ability to do this, ability to do that, and uh, bring you close to that uh, place where you you have those encounters. And so if you are yearning and seeking more of God, and I'm talking to my, it's not just my, my you know, uh, the fivefold, everyone out there too, you can have that. It takes the Holy Spirit get to know the holy spirit i i'm telling you you will not regret it he is just awesome he just also you have to acknowledge him 
you have to acknowledge him. And I got myself with uh, in trouble with God at that time. That was when, 2009. I think it had gone on. As you see, I, I will pray in and then I think I will, I will not acknowledge him. I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. That's the problem. I keep saying ignorance is not an excuse. And then he let me know. And so I learned to address all God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit in my prayers. I, w- I think I was ignoring, uh, uh, acknowledging the uh, goodness and faithfulness of God in my life. And that, that was a problem. You see what I mean? I was concentrating on the, on the, on the, on the, the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And every, every now and then, and when I looked back, that's what I was doing. I addressed the Father, and he was not having it. And so when I said the Father himself wants to relate to us, it's true. He was missing it. Because all of a sudden, <laughs> I cut him off. I wasn't even aware of, I was doing that. That's the thing. I wasn't aware. And that was the time that he was telling me I have to fight for my masters because a whole lot of it were going on. I was sick. He, I was sick, and I didn't even. He didn't even allow me to know that I was sick. If I say that you be, it's like, what do you mean by you didn't know you are sick? It was later. Am I, was I looking myself in the mirror? Yeah, but did I see it? No. And uh, it wasn't the only time. There are certain things I go through. He wouldn't let me know. And before, I'm like, oh God, I just went through this. And so, that's one thing good about the Holy Spirit. During that time, the Holy Spirit was telling me, keep your eye on me. Don't look at the problems. You have to fight for this. Don't look at the problems. And so, I think I got, I got tired. And then, what else did I do that got me in trouble? Uh, I became bitter was the whole situation and I was complaining that's the word I was complaining 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 and God didn't like that I was complaining a lot of complaints instead of going and just knowing who he is and just loving on him everything I teach I forgot to do myself at the time and I was complaining and he has to break that Yoke, and then got my attention, and uh, I'm like, oh my God! I didn't realize I was doing that. I've gotten that bad, and so, hey, I mean, uh, the Holy Spirit is just amazing in in the universe. What He has done, when you see it, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. He is in control, and uh, I I pray that everybody will have Him that way. Because he, he, I share these things because he wants people, God wants to be seen. He wants his people to know who he is. He said to me, when I share these encounters, it's going to challenge some to seek for more. And also, it's going to bless people. People are going to be healed. A whole lot in there, he said. And so, for me, I don't understand how anybody will hold back what God is giving us. I know there are certain things that it has to be private, okay? But then you watch me when I'm saying it, it comes to that part, I take it out. And he will tell you himself. But most of it, we have to speak and share it. It's not given just to us for us to keep. Because God wants to be seen. And so he finds somebody he can trust. And then he gives all of this to the person. And he's counting on the, on us or the person to uh, pass it on. You know, he's counting on us to pass it on. Because God wants to be seen. See how much, we, I mean, a child knows about the other world. But we don't know about God. It was designed intentionally to move the Holy Spirit, God, out of the way. 
but yet the other the other world take what is God and then they contaminate it. They perverse it. The universe is awesome. The Holy Spirit you found him is awesome. What else can I say here? Uh, shooting, I talk about that. Um, all right, and I think I do there. Yeah, all right. Um, I think the the uh, last time I was here, spent time with you. I talk about the Father, the Holy Spirit. Uh, the ring is a symbol symbolism of the Holy Spirit and so is that if you see a river it's the same thing water is the same thing wind is the same thing the wind is the atmosphere so the Holy Spirit controls the atmosphere like I said he you know he he just spin everything around so I sometimes I look at the world the way they carry on as if they own the whole world and everything is in control and then uh, they are invincible they make me laugh because they think they are in control <laughs> if the if the Holy Spirit or God should just point you know thing, use his finger or uh, to just do like this they will be falling apart they will, not, they will not be able to get up so the Holy Spirit will do himself in so all to this to let you know this is me this is me I think I had uh, one of that encounter yeah it was it was John the Baptist that I, I met <laughs> they always uh, allow me to look at it and when these people when these things happen there's a reason something to do with the assignment something when they want to do that there's something always he was like by the riverside and it was very old he's very old he looks very old and he has you know that's i'm like oh my god it's him that's what i said i just look at him and he has you know beard and the cloth was like that across him and he has a uh, like a I don't know how it got like a bowl, small bowl, and it was scooping, it's like getting water. And I'm like, oh, it's John the Baptist. <laughs> but uh, there going to be time that I'll talk about our Lord. I will, when I said, the last time I said I see him face to face like this, there was a, 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 something there that I, I would like to share. It's not just, you know, it seems appropriate yet yeah, I'll find if I teach about him uh, some of his encounters with me I will share it today I only gave, I'll, I only gave you his encounter with uh, the healing you know the the encounter that I had with the audible voice uh, that was the first one it was my goodness uh, I'm not a, I'm not a very good storyteller right maybe that's why I don't go into things too much but I'm, I'm, uh, as I'm talking, I'm leaving it. As I'm talking to you, I, I, even when I sit here, most of the time, when you see me like this or something, I'm drifting away. So I have to, sometimes I have to catch myself. I, I drift, I drift. It's constant with me. I drift. So it's just the relationship that you have with the Holy Spirit. And so, um, get to know the Holy Spirit. Okay, get to know the Holy Spirit is is awesome, and so I think we have done enough today. Yes, I managed to talk about the beauty of the universe. Okay, I just told you the universe is beautiful. I just wrote down that I should not forget to talk about the universe and the eye of God. I did because when I'm writing. And I'm talking to the Holy Spirit, He will bring things to my attention. Some of the encounters, what are, you know, where it should be good to say this and say that. And so, um, 
because I know wh what he likes, uh, when I'm coming on like this, I need time. And yesterday, I wanted to come on. Yes, I have to apologize. It was getting late, and uh, I've been with him, and I was extremely tired, and I just didn't want to come and just mess up. I know I wouldn't have been able to mess up because he would have taken over, but I'm like, Lord, forgive me. I wanted to give him more time uh, and then to worship him, worship him and praise him. And so when I come out here, uh, he is really alive with me here, okay? And so I apologize for not coming up. Um, like I said, I, I would. And so um, I pray for every one of us that you will uh, give God a chance get to know the Holy Spirit and let him come and love you and teach you his ways okay so that you will live the fulfillment of life that he has given all of us uh, with the Holy Spirit there's nothing that you cannot do Holy Spirit is just amazing is an like amazing, amazing God. He's like, he's just amazing. If I sit here, or if, I mean, I will be writing, so uh, I will try to put it in PDF, or if I publish, to give those books out to some, uh, give them out. There's so much that uh, is suspected of me and uh, it's all because God cares about his children and loves his children so when he finds somebody that he can trust he gives so much of himself so that the person in turn can give to his people because we are not paying attention we are not listening to him really and when I say we are not listening to him we don't know his voice and this is because we are not in the place that we can hear him because guess what he's always talking we are the ones that cannot hear him God is always talking all I have to do is just lie down there <laughs> or sometimes I don't even have to lie down I'll be walking and doing I was working somewhere and please forgive me I was in the bathroom getting ready and taking a shower and I get a whole prophecy for my manager under the shower. So it's not about what we do, it's what God wants to do with us. It's not of our might, our might, our strength. It's not like that. Or how 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 long you pray. I'm very sure some people pray longer than me. Well, it's not about that. It's all about God, what God wants to do with individuals. But it starts from getting to know the Holy Spirit and believing in Him and His ways. And you'll be amazed the doors that He will open for you. And then when you get to the person going, then you, you'll be asking, more of him because guess what it will not be enough for you <laughs> and this is because God is endless there's so much in God there's so much in God and then he tells me I should make sure that I do not come and ask him for small things and so I ask for everything Everything that I see and read, like I'm reading, and the Holy Spirit giving revelation, I want that. I want to experience it. I see somebody talking about their experience. I stop everything. I want to hear. Is this something in there for me? And if it's something in there for me, I go to God. And sometimes the other thing is when you get interested because God wants to be seen. You don't even open your mouth. And God will be showing certain things to you. He'll cause you to leave it. It's just amazing. 
and that's God because he know he knows your motives your mind your your heart towards him so with God you cannot pretend I have to say it you cannot pretend with God you just have to you see how we are friends and then even if I use that it will not be right because sometimes we pretend with our friends but with God you have to be all open because he created you you can't pretend with God it's not about being righteous before God for them, for him to give himself to you know it's not about that because he loves you and he, he can trust you and you want to know him he's going to reveal himself to you I, I tell you as a father I know your word is written but I don't want to hear from anybody about you I want to know who you are from your hand teach me your ways I want all of you you'll be amazed what I'm saying but it's true not some of him I want everything and I do the same with the our Lord I do the same with the Holy Spirit sometimes I wonder maybe why I have so much and then I will read the lives of the prophets and each and every one I see something that I like I tell God I want it and so I have each and every you know those that I, I like their life or have read that I think is that fascinates me I have something in them in me I have something in them in me and I say that for a good reason maybe God will allow me another time to share it when I encounter Christ like that I met a whole lot of other people too that he, that he will introduce me to that's why I tell you when people say oh Mm, there are no prophets uh -huh. and then uh, because the prophet met the, uh, the Lord okay mm. they have no clue what they are talking about they have no clue um, mm. <laughs> when I met the Lord there are other people that were presented to me before me And then as I search and I ask the Lord, I'm like, who are these people? I want to see them again. Give me that. And he gave it to me again. But the Holy Spirit, I said, who, who are these people? Oh, he could tell me, he wouldn't give me everything. It's like, they have all lived before. But looking at them, knowing I keep asking and then he keeps dropping stuff in my spirit. I already know who they are and why I was presented to them or they were presented to me. So I have to behave myself and be a good girl. <laughs> and so um, we need the Holy Spirit. We all do. His endless everything we need is hidden in Him. Life is in the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you are empty, but you don't know it. Take it from me. I'm not here to sell you anything or to take money from you. That's the last thing. I want to give you the life that God has ordained for you. You have a choice to accept the Holy Spirit. But I will not say you have a choice to deny Him because you desperately need Him. And so I will not say that. I will encourage you to go and to get to know Him. Invite Him. And when you start, just because you can't hear anything and then and our problem is we are impatient and we give up and that's the problem and then you have to go back and start all over again keep doing it even if nothing happens he's hearing you what is going to happen you know he has to respond 
one way or the other in its own time if we want something as human beings we want it now and we want it our way no let God lead you and take everything I've said here into account uh, I've so much to give you a picture to even stand on and pray but I encourage my fivefold friends to seek more of God because God is reaching out trying to give us so much of himself but you have to prepare yourself and go before him and let him pour himself into you there's so much God wants to try want us to have trying to get to us there's so much after now even though I'm sitting here say I'm looking over there the heavens are open and it's not just there it's wherever I look but I'm seeing from this direction because I'm facing here and that's what happened to me when I finished talking about the Holy Spirit I already knew what was going to happen anything that you spend your time on or you teach it's just because sometimes we don't know so we don't see it God gives it back to you God will reward you okay. it doesn't matter what you spend your time to teach in the Bible He will reward you if I talk about the Holy Spirit it's given to me I mean I have any peace I have another given to you this peace he gives you something about himself and moves me up just like I was telling you <laughs> after I finished talking about the Holy Spirit he took me to the Holy of Holies and so during I think it was January or February when I came I said I had to sing to the Lord and because I have been online and after that I said, Father, oh, I'm, how I miss the Lord. Oh, Lord, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you. It's not because I don't, you know, you experience them, but there are different levels. But there's, there's a way that when you meet him, it's like you are full. And so as soon as I said that, it was three days later, then he comes. <laughs> I was lying down. For instance, yesterday, I share a smile with the Holy Spirit. It's something that He said, He whispered in my ears. And I'm lying down and smiling, and He's smiling. You see, when I say things like that, you might think I'm crazy. But if we believe the other side is true, why don't we believe God is true? He created everything. It's real. This is real. This is real. It just we have been taught so badly and these things have been hidden from us and so this is why we are what where we are God loves his children he wants to have that relationship so draw me in all right okay I am going to ask anybody that is watching me or will watch later if you don't know Christ Christ is the reason why we are here. If you don't know Christ, I will plead with you to give your life to Christ. If you don't have Christ, you don't have no life. And so I will encourage you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Christ and you want to receive Christ, Give, give me a chance and let him let him prove himself to you okay is the life that you have the life that you should have so I'm going to pray and repeat it with me okay and uh, if you are already a Christian and uh, you want to renew your relationship with Christ 
repeat it with me and I ask her to the Lord to just refresh you you know wherever you are let, tell him to come and meet you where you are and he will because he doesn't want any one of us to perish and he loves us okay so let's pray Father I thank you Holy Spirit it's an honor always to be with you you know how much I love you I thank you so much for coming and speaking to your children this day taking hold of me and having your way like you like it I honor you and I thank you tonight I hand over your children into your hands and I ask that you meet them at the point of their need wherever they are minister to them in the spirit this is why and this is the reason you are who you are I ask that you nurse your people nurse them towards you they need a little bit of nursing Lord do not let them fall apart have mercy Holy Spirit I thank you for your word that you have given us I ask that may we seek to find you may your word take hold in our lives and may you grant us understanding and wisdom to get to know more of for who you are. It's the Lord Jesus. Repeat this after me. Those who want to um, accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, Christ to come into their lives. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I call upon you this morning. I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. But tonight, I want to give my life into your hands. I ask that you come into my life. Wash me and cleanse me. Purify me. Forgive me my sins. And make me your own. Draw me to yourself. I turn away from all evil. I want to be born again. I want to follow you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for cleansing me and washing me and making me your own. I am born again a new life. From today, I will never turn back. Today I will save you. You have become my Lord and my Savior. I'm a new creature. I thank you for loving me and washing me and cleansing me. I belong to you and you only. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am born again. I have been made new. And I thank you. Lord, I let your glory fall on your people this morning. Shine your face upon your people, Lord. Remember your people. Cause them to seek more of you. Cause them to want them to know you. Draw them by your spirit. As you have given me, Lord, let them seek to find and to have the heart and the earnest to get to know who you are. So that in turn you pour yourself in your children. I thank you, Father, for you are good in all your ways. Remember my brothers and sisters out there. The Father, cover them, protect them, and comfort them. In every situation they might be facing or going through, Father, protect them. 
will bring comfort and peace into their lives. I honor you and I thank you that as your word has gone forth, you will seal it in them. That it will not fall on the stony ground, that it will touch their hearts to receive and give them the understanding to know the word and get to know you more and more like never before. And in turn, Father, I ask that you be gracious to your children. I thank you and I honor you for such a privilege and honor to come before you. I'm ever so grateful. I thank you, Father, for using me to touch to touch your children. May your name be glorified. I love you, Father. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. And I thank you for this day that your strength has made me perfect. Your strength is what has sustained me. I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, darlings. May the grace of God be your portion. May the strength of God overtake you. May the power of the Holy Spirit saturate you. And be an answer that you are seeking for to get into every part of your life and to bring peace and success into your life. Holy Spirit, I ask that you love your children this morning. Love them like never before. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. All right, darlings. Thank you for joining me and for watching later. Have a blessed day. And I'm thankful and grateful for joining me, okay? I appreciate you so much. All right, darlings. God bless you. God be with you and beside you, okay? All right, darling. Have a blessed day and enjoy your wonderful day, okay? All right, then. Until then, we'll see you again, okay? Goodbye, and I love you. Bye-bye.